Welcome back to our discussion of the Eumenes Project, showcasing the speculative zoology of the planet Eumenes in the Korea system. In our previous video, we explored life above the permanent cloud banks coating the planet. Now we will venture deep within the mists to discover the ever stranger creatures that inhabit the slopes and smothered plateaus of the seas of mist. Our first creature is called the Nibbler. This animal, despite appearances, is not parasitic. Instead, it has evolved to latch painlessly onto larger creatures as they pass, effectively hitching a ride until they reach a more favorable area. Nibbler saliva contains a natural relaxant, so most creatures tolerate the added burden. Dependence on this novel form of locomotion has caused the Nibbler's limbs to become reduced to mere flippers for short distance movement. Brooding females, called queens, rear their young in a pouch until their jaws are strong enough to migrate along with the pack. Their unique adaptations characterize nibblers as locomotive commensalists. Traveling in herds and bearing their young on their backs, these simple grazers are called packers. They produce large broods to compensate for the rigors of a migratory lifestyle in the predator-filled seas of mists. A unique feature of the packers is that they unknowingly carry strangers on their backs. Called echoes, these small creatures have evolved to mimic the appearance of packer young. They thus benefit from the packer parent's protection and feeding. Remarkably, echoes do not supplant the host species' infants. Since they are dependent on packer parents, the echoes have adapted to monitor and herd packer infants into maturity. Another species benefiting from close symbiosis are what we will call meeps, after their high-pitched musical cries. These predatory burrowers have formed an unlikely bond with a far different species. These soft, amorphous creatures, called blobs, rely on camouflage and rapid reproduction to balance their defenselessness. This harmless nature has allowed blobs to coexist with meeps, sharing the safety of meep burrows. Meeps dig out extensions to the burrows and offer protection from blobs' natural predators. Meanwhile, blobs secrete a natural bonding agent, which effectively seals the burrow walls from moisture and intrusion. Together, meeps and blobs maintain the burrows and look out for predators. On rare occasions, blobs are known to ride on the backs of meeps for faster locomotion. One odd creature, which has adapted to many elevations and biomes on Eumenes, is what we call the blether. These gentle frugivores look deceptively harmless as they roam the sparse fruit stands of the seas of mist. However, their front tentacles make effective and sometimes deadly whips, forcing any predators to approach with caution. A distant relative of the blether is called the quaz. This species has adopted to a carnivorous lifestyle. The two front limbs have become powerful hooked means of locomotion, while the rear limbs have been reduced to mere stubs. Quazes are pack hunters and lay in wait for prey before lunging from multiple directions at once. Once you're caught in the grip of a quaz, survival is probable. One widespread but oddly named resident of Eumenes is the blether-headed quaz. The name is a misnomer since the creature has no relation to either the blether or the quaz. This creature is omnivorous and benefits from chitinous plates and long limbs to traverse rocky slopes. The dimness of the mists have forced some plant species to adapt dramatically. One example is the herpader tree, a rare and massive variety that pursues sunlight by reaching heights inconceivable on Earth. Rare herpader megaforests dot Eumenes, one of the few inhabitants of the lower elevations to experience direct sunlight. The final creature to discuss is the Nukuldude. A bizarre species with truly tenuous relations to other creatures, the Nukuldude is a massive omnivore that roams the mist-obscured plateaus. The Nukuldude has evolved a long proboscis used to pierce flesh or bark and drain the vital juices. Nukuldudes seem to be able to grow indefinitely so long as they survive, allowing some rare titans to reach the lowest boughs of the herpeter tree. In the next episode, we will discuss the even stranger creatures which inhabit the damp, dark plains below the clouds. Thank you.